Hey folks, and welcome to our third and final video for the day. And in our last video, you'll recall that we were talking about implicit bias and implicit bias training. And although implicit bias can have some pretty widespread effects on our behavior, it doesn't seem like it's that easy to actually reshape people's implicit bias. So if this isn't a good target for reducing prejudice, what might be? Thankfully, there is something that has been relatively proven to work, and this is intergroup contact. Basically, the idea of just getting to know somebody from a group that you might not have initially positive associations with. And this hypothesis, this idea, was developed by Gordon Alport. We've heard from Alport before talking about prejudice. And here, he proposes that prejudice may be reduced by equal status contact between majority and minority groups. So this could be, for instance, like white and black Americans or like straight and LGBTQ individuals in the pursuit of common goals. So you've got people who are on an even playing field and they're working towards the same thing. He says the effect is greatly enhanced if this contact is sanctioned by institutional supports. So if you have laws or customs or a local um, atmosphere that is supportive of equality and provided it is of a sort that leads to the perception of common interests and common humanity between members of the two groups. So contact has been consistently shown to help break down stereotypes and prejudices but it tends to be especially helpful under a really particular set of conditions. And these are the following. When contact is cooperative and working towards a shared goal. When contact is enjoyable and pleasant rather than difficult and stressful and burdensome. When contact between groups occurs under conditions of equal status. So, you know, members of both groups working on an equal playing field rather than maybe having one group in a consistently higher status, higher power position. Being in an institutional context where the norms really support inclusion and diversity and equality. If you're in a context, a larger social context, where people think it's okay to have prejudice and they don't support equality, then contact can go on for a long time without actually breaking down any barriers. And finally, it's important that members end up acting in ways that are counter to the stereotypes about their larger groups. So if members of different groups get together and end up just kind of replicating and reifying the stereotypes that they have about each other, that could actually be damaging rather than helpful. And if you put all of these different ingredients together, you're more likely to end up with contact that actually leads people to see each other as individuals, to really understand that different members of these groups all have their own unique personalities and interests. And this is part of what causes the breakdown of stereotypes and prejudice. And one final detail about the contact hypothesis, a meta-analysis that was conducted by Linda Trope whose interview you just saw, and her collaborator Thomas Pettigrew, found that one of the main ways that contact works is through these more interpersonal channels of helping people become more comfortable with contact with members of an outgroup and increasing the degree of empathy that they felt for members of that group. So this is really rooted in the relationship that these people had with each other. It was also helpful that they were increasing their specific knowledge of what members of that other group were like, but this wasn't the most important factor in reducing prejudice. So to sum up, we've talked about implicit bias and how given that most people in modern day America don't explicitly endorse prejudice and bias, right? Most people are not going to explicitly say, yeah, I'm racist and proud of it. Um, but we all often carry around different associations that we have about members of different social groups. And so implicit bias is an important driver of these more subtle discriminatory behaviors that we see. But unfortunately, interventions that are designed to change implicit bias still don't seem to be very effective. And this might be partly because implicit biases themselves are the product of years 
of repeated experience, absorbing all of these different association, associations and messages that we see in the world around us, in advertising, in movies, in conversations with parents and teachers and friends. And so even one intensive workshop is unlikely to do a lifetime of learning. But one thing that does seem to work, even against a kind of lifetime of history, a lifetime of developing these associations, is really building relationships with members of a group that you might not be as familiar with. It needs to occur under certain conditions, so this tends to be the most effective if you have equal status, people working cooperatively towards a shared goal, so really feeling like they're on the same team, and having the kind of personal and individualized contact that allows them to break down stereotypes. And part of what seems to make this effective is really rooted in the interpersonal relationship. So building a greater sense of ease with members of that group, letting go of some of that anxiety um, that you might otherwise have with interacting with people who are different than you, and developing a deeper sense of empathy for members of that other group. 